Let's explore program threats and understand security vulnerabilities in operating systems. We will discuss various forms of malicious software and how they can affect your computer. A Trojan horse is a type of malicious code that appears legitimate but performs undisclosed malicious functions when executed, potentially compromising system security. It is named after the ancient Greek story of the Trojan War, where soldiers hid inside a wooden horse to enter the city of Troy. Here are some key characteristics of Trojan horses. They often disguise themselves as legitimate software. They require user activation to execute. They cannot self-replicate like viruses. They are often used to establish backdoors, and they may steal sensitive information. Let's explore the common types of Trojan horses. First, we have backdoors, which create unauthorized access points to bypass normal authentication and gain remote control of the system. Remote access Trojans are examples of this. Next is spyware, which monitors user activities and collects sensitive information like keystrokes, browsing history, and login credentials. Keyloggers and screen recorders are examples. Then there is banking Trojans that are specifically designed to steal banking credentials and financial information from infected systems. Zeus and SpyEye are examples of this. Ransomware encrypts user files and demands payment for the decryption key, effectively holding data hostage. Examples include WannaCry and Riak. Short Message Service, or SMS, Trojans infect mobile devices to send premium rate SMS messages, generating revenue for attackers at user expense. Fake Instant Opfake are examples of this. Finally, there are botnets that turn infected computers into zombies that can be remotely controlled to perform distributed attacks. Mirai and Emotet are examples. A computer virus is a type of malicious software that when executed replicates itself by modifying other computer programs and inserting its own code. When this replication succeeds, the affected areas are then said to be infected. Here are some key properties of viruses. They have self-replication capabilities. They have to attach to a host file. They modify the code of the host. Their execution is triggered by some event. They use evasion techniques to avoid detection. And finally, they deliver their payload, which is the damaging part of the virus. Let's examine the common types of computer viruses. There are boot sector viruses, which infect the master boot record of storage devices and activate when the system boots before the operating system loads. Michelangelo and Form are examples of this type of virus. Then there are file infectors, which attach to executable files, such as those with the .ex, e or .c, om extensions and activate when the infected program runs. An example is the CIH or Chernobyl virus or the Cascade virus. Multipartite viruses combine boot sector and file infection methods and can spread through multiple vectors. Tequila and Flip are examples. Polymorphic viruses change their code structure with each infection to evade detection by antivirus software. Stealth viruses hide from detection by intercepting system calls and returning fake information. Macro viruses are written in macro languages embedded in documents like Word or Excel files. A computer worm is a standalone malware program that replicates itself to spread to other computers. Unlike viruses, worms can propagate without any human interaction and do not need to attach to an existing program. Key features of worms include self-replication without a host program, network-based propagation, autonomous spreading without user action, active scanning for vulnerabilities, and the ability to consume network bandwidth and resources. Let's take a look at some notable computer worms in history. In 1988, the Morris worm was one of the first recognized worms on the internet, created by Robert Morris as an experiment. It exploited vulnerabilities in Unix SendMail, Finger, and RSH or RecSec. In 2001, CodeRed targeted Microsoft II's web servers by exploiting a buffer overflow vulnerability. It defaced websites and launched distributed denial-of-service attacks. In 2004, 
Sasser exploited a vulnerability in the Local Security Authority Subsystem Service, or LSAS, in Windows, and was created by German computer science student Sven Jaskin. In 2010, Stuxnet was a sophisticated worm targeting industrial control systems, specifically Siemens SCADS systems, and is believed to have been created to sabotage Iran's nuclear program. It was the first known cyber weapon to cause physical damage. Malware, short for malicious software, is any software intentionally designed to cause damage to a computer, server, client, or computer network. It can take many forms and exploit various vulnerabilities. Common types of malware include keyloggers, backdoors, ransomware, rootkits, spyware, adware, bots, and crypto miners. Let's delve into some advanced malware types. Rootkits are malware that provide privileged access to a computer while actively hiding its presence. They often modify system files or the kernel to maintain stealth. Ransomware encrypts the victim's files and demands payment for the decryption key, often spreading through phishing emails or exploiting vulnerabilities. Examples of ransomware include WannaCry, Pedia, Reuk, and CryptoLocker. Crypto miners hijack computer resources to mine cryptocurrency without the user's consent and can be delivered through compromised websites or malicious downloads. Advanced persistent threats are sophisticated, targeted attacks that focus on stealing data over long periods of time and are often state-sponsored, using multiple attack vectors to maintain persistence. Examples include Stuxnet, Duku, Flame, and Advanced Persistent Threat 29, also known as Cozy Bear. To defend against program threats, employ these strategies. Use updated antivirus and anti-malware software. Keep operating systems and applications patched. Implement strong access controls and authentication. Use firewalls and intrusion detection systems. Monitor system behavior and network traffic. Maintain regular backups of critical data and train users on security awareness and best practices. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit codelucky.com for more such useful content.